Hello and welcome and thank you so much for giving me a minute of your day. Now, most likely your reason for clicking on this video is because either you are thinking about starting a devlog or you are already devlogging, but you are not satisfied with the numbers and the traction and the views that you're getting on those devlogs. But really, I just wanted to come on here and talk about the fact that I think those numbers are actually the least important thing. There are so many other benefits to devlogging and there are so many reasons to do it, even though no one's watching them. And if you stick around, I'll tell you why. My name is Emily Kay. I'm a game writer and independent game designer, and I devlog as often as I can, even though it's pretty quiet around here, but I don't mind. And that's the point because reason number one is that devlogging is genuinely one of the most motivating things I've ever done when it comes to developing a game. Now, if you are making a game, especially if you are making it from scratch or if you're a solo developer like myself, it can be so easy to be completely overwhelmed with just the mountain of work of things that still needs to be done. But when you devlog, this really incredible thing happens where all of a sudden, week by week, instead of just looking at that mountaintop, you end up looking at the things that you are actually getting done as well. It's pretty common knowledge that to stay motivated and to stay productive, you need a to-do list, yes, but you also need a done list that keeps you mindful of how far you've actually come. And devlogs are exactly that. I've come to see my videos about my game as this neat little montage that shows all of the hard work that I've already put in there. And looking back at that can be so motivating, not because I'm narcissistic about my own work, but because it takes focus away from where you need to go. And instead it brings focus on what you've already done, what you've accomplished. And that's something to be really proud about. Imagine having this video montage of your entire game dev journey and the ability to look over it in a nicely edited way with a soundtrack of your choosing. Like, that is amazing. And reason number two to devlog, even if nobody's watching, is that it is a perfect way to stay very, very mindful of your game's design pillars, brand, and vision. At least for me, when I design my games, I tend to have a few design pillars that I'm very, very aware of and what I want my game to be. But I also tend to do that thing where I start working on something and then I get into a flow state. And before you know it, two days have gone by and I've done something completely irrelevant because I went down that path on a whim and all of a sudden it's a mess, right? And two days are lost. But see, by making videos about your project, instantly that stops you from doing that because if you want people to watch those videos, obviously you want to provide some sort of coherent, nice narrative about your design decisions and how you got from A to B. And so you can't just do a 180 on your design and do something completely different because it wouldn't make any sense in terms of telling that story of how your game came to be. At least for me, having that in the back of my head that at the end of the week, I need to make a video about whatever I'm doing. It helps me stay on track and it helps me be very, very mindful of those design pillars, which actually brings us right to the next thing. And that is to finish the tasks that you're working on. Now, if your Trello board is anything like mine, I don't know what to tell you because it is a mess. I personally have a tendency to finish things like 80% and then I move on because I'm over it and I'm bored and I don't want to do it anymore and I want to do something else. And I don't mean finishing in terms of like polishing it up really nice and adding animation and sound like none of that, right? I'm talking about the base functionality being done 80%. It is like barely holding together. But once again, if you are making videos, you have to finish it because you are going to make a video about that feature that isn't done yet. And sure, you can cover it up. Those last 20%, you can, you can hide the bugs, you can hide uh, everything in editing and you can put it all nice together in, in video format. But in my experience, it is so much quicker to just do the thing, do the last 20%, get it out of the way, and then film it when it's complete. And my project is so much better for it. And the next point on my list is networking. I'm an introvert, I'm extremely shy. Talking to other people or to this camera makes me want to punch myself in the face. So it is absolutely no wonder that networking events is the absolute worst. 
Now I enjoy a conference as much as the next indie developer. However, the social networking aspect when you don't know anybody is absolutely awkward for me personally. But I am sure that you've also noticed that on YouTube and everywhere else on the internet, now everybody's devlogging and everybody's sharing their game. I absolutely adore indie game makers. Uh, it is this amazing, wonderful group of people where everybody has unique ideas, unique vision, extreme drive, and everybody's super nice. And when you start devlogging, that is your ticket into that group of people. It has been absolutely overwhelming to see how welcoming that community is. Not only that, but now instead of having to randomly bring up the fact that you also make a game or whatever, now you have the ultimate icebreaker. Because people will go to your channel, they can watch your videos and, and instantly they are going to get what you are about, what your game is about. And instantly you have so much to talk about. You can compare your videos, you can compare your games, you can play test for each other. And it is just the golden ticket into the VIP lounge of indie game making. Now the next point is about community and solidarity. And yes, I promise that this point is different from the previous one. Now, obviously we are all getting into devlogging and into YouTube because we need a place to market our games. That's just what it is. But what you're going to realize when you get into this crazy world of devlogging and YouTubing is that every single view is a real person. Every single view on one of your videos is somebody who decided to stop and care and click on your video and give you a minute of their day. And that is absolutely incredible. Just stop and think about that for a second. Now, it is absolutely no secret that while making my own indie game, I have gotten stuck. And I mean, thoroughly stuck. Um, and I made a couple of videos on that. And each of those videos does not have more than a couple of hundred views. But if you were to go back and look at those videos and you scroll down to the comment section, they are filled with love and support and care from this absolutely tight-knit community that we have. And not only are those comments filled with words of love and encouragement, they are also giving genuinely good advice that I have since used in my game. And so what that leads you to is that now you don't have to pay for a focus group. You don't have to go and get a think tank or whatever. You don't have to find playtesters because they're right there. And if I've learned anything about the indie game community, it is that people are very involved and they will let you know what they think. And that is awesome. And yes, the last point is exposure. It is the reason why we all do it, it's the reason why we all get into it, and we can't get around that. And obviously, when you're a small developer, every single bit helps. But the point of this video was to show that there are so many other benefits to devlogging, to the point where I would even say that I think people should make these videos even if you don't plan on posting them. That's how much I've come to believe in this format. If anything, I've actually learned that I am extremely grateful that I didn't completely blow up on this platform, at least not to start with. Um, that's something that's been extremely helpful to my own self-development and to my project as well. But that is something I can talk about some other time if you want me to. As I said, I started devlogging around nine months ago and since then I've honestly come to rely on devlogging for design decisions, uh, self-development, productivity, motivation, anything and everything. And I'm going to continue doing it even though I am so far still a nobody on this platform but I don't care. And that's the point. So I hope you enjoyed my sort of rambles about this. If you did, please let me know. And on that note, I'll see you next time. Bye guys.